Okay. So you guys remember what we went over in class, right? We had to have two machines running in order for this to run appropriately, right? So the jet, what, what do we use the jet for? Why are we beeping? Upper limit. See, we, we still have to troubleshoot even on the fly. Look at that. Right. <laughs> Let me it's know if any of the other four reach out or three reach out to you so I can go get them. Is he here? Sometimes you use it real slow. You know, you use, like, Alicia and Casey were here and then they walked away. Yeah, they're like in the parking lot. Minute, you know? <laughs> like a sigh. A bit of... Love it. Yeah. Okay. So come on up here, guys. Yeah. Perfect. So, we have the basic settings. Yeah. So, do you guys remember what this part's called? The what? Transducer. Transducer? No. And Elsa Brand name, yeah. But what's happening right here? Why don't, you, why don't you come over here and feel the box? Feel the box. Come on. Come and touch it. Feel the box. What's it doing? What's it doing? In this case, it's not a vibration, it's a pulsation. So, pulse. So, this is the patient. Pulsator. This is where this is where this is going to pulsate for the breaths. So as the air is flowing, as it flows through here, this pulsates to the rate that you're supposed to be sending out to the patient. So believe it or not, those pinch valves, they actuate at that inspiratory time, and obviously we're at 420 Sorry. breath rate. No, you're good, you're good. So it's able to be very precise in pinching the tubing. That tubing, we move every four to six hours. You don't want it to be smashing on the same piece of tubing. So you just kind of slide it. They give you little increments, or at least some of the newer ones, they give you increments that you kind of just yeah. move it around. If you come over here and feel, yeah. it feels like a rubber band. Like a rubber uh, piece of tubing. Yeah, see the pulsation right there on the inside? See it? that little black tab? If you actually push down on here, it's, it moves opens it down it. so we can move the this little section of the circuit in there around there. So when you do your setup, you just push the button, it opens the jaws, slide it in there, and then periodically, like set on a time schedule, you just want to move it just oh, incrementally. The They're, in the lobby. They're in the lobby now? Yeah. Okay. So this is a pressure line, so this is to sense the pressure that's coming from the circuit that's going out to our baby. So as you can see by the lung, it pulsates pretty good. Thank you. So this this is their adapter. They'll just have to do three assignments. They actually fine. make an endotracheal tube that goes into the patient, and then you're going to monitor the patient's pressures within the trachea, which is probably the better way to do it but it's sometimes difficult to reintubate a real sick baby so they made this adapter where you can measure the pressures out here and it's good enough so um, but yeah that's something we that just, what we essentially do is now. we take the regular ET2 right pop off the adapter and replace it with this right so they just switch out they're interchangeable the one that Benel made is called the high low jet tube and it's like say it's designed to to work with the with the jet. So that's the Tesla, right? This yep. is the Tesla, yeah. Yeah. So cool. yeah, the Tesla. So, what disease processes do we like to use the jet with? ARDS. What else? Cystic fibrosis. Anything else? 
Remember us talking about air leaks? So like pneumos and things like that? Or um, like diaphragmatic hernias? This is a great mode of ventilation for those babies because it's so gentle on them. You see the pulsations, but you don't get as much of a leak as you would say with the conventional ventilator, which is why it's yelling. Because the conventional ventilator here, all this is doing is providing a peep to maintain the peep that's being delivered here. Is this what makes the baby's diaphragm leak? Yes, remember us talking about the wiggle? That's this. Well, the oscillator is a little more associated with the wiggle a wiggle the thigh this is less so but still you still get the same idea it's a fast you know the rates on the jet are slower typically than the rates on the oscillator the important thing to realize when you talk about high frequency it's not really how fast they go although the oscillator goes really fast on the on the, the a model you can go for a thousand breaths a minute the issue or the 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 thing you want to consider is it active or passive exhalation. So the jet is passive exhalation. So the rate in research, Bert Bennell, the doctor that developed it, who I worked for, he came up with the breath rate of 660 is the fastest that the lungs can recoil on their own. So it has a limit in its, in its speed because you want the lungs to recoil on exhalation and push the gas back out. Where with the oscillator, this one has active exhalation. So it is a piston. So it sucks back out, right? It gives the breath and then it sucks back out. In doing so, you can, what do you think is possible with airways when you're suctioning or pulling on them? What do you think might happen? Collapse, they collapse. So the oscillator, you typically need more mean airway pressure in order to hold the airways open as you oscillate in and out of those airways. So with the oscillator, you typically are going to use more mean airway pressure than when you do on the jet. The jet, you're always going to use less mean airway pressure. So those are important things to remember between those two things. Oscillator is a piston. You can see the piston right here. It goes in and out and pushes the gas in and then pulls it right back out again. And we'll mm -hmm. activate that one. Mm -hmm. This is so passive you exhalation. You're getting a breath in, very gentle breath, and the lungs recoil. So with this, as you can see, we have our basic settings that what we set down here. So we've got the um, basic control. So this is your PIP. This is the pressure that we use. Then uh, this is our rate that we've set or the frequency the I time and the ID ratio. So we have the numbers that we can set these at, and as you can see, that provides that passive exhalation that we want. Now remember, these are tiny amounts of breaths over a high frequency, which is why they push in, and then they can slowly exhale out around the, the gases that are still pushing in and being siphoned through. It's also why their lungs can expand and stay expanded without being necessarily lost to the air leaks that happen. So up here, so these are your settings, what you've set, and this is what is actually happening. This is what's going out to our baby or our adult or whatever patient we have. And so you have our pressure, so we have our pit that was set here at 20. This is what it is at up here. Then we have our peeps. So our peeps at here at five, that's maintained by this. So whatever order the doctor puts, so if they want a peep of five, we go by what this is saying, but we adjust this to help maintain that pressure. Does that make sense? This is there just as the basis of maintaining the pressure within the system. This one, because of how fast the frequency gets, this can adjust the peep so it starts trending downwards because you'll lose the peep because of the passive exhalation that's happening just from this fast rate. Then you have your servo. The servo is going, going to tell you, um, I forgot what the servo does. What is well, there? it's it's how much energy, the ener you know, kind of like how much force the, the machine has to, or how hard it has to work in order to deliver your PIP of 20. 
So that environment can change when there's leaks or pneumos. That's why it's very interesting. The, the jet actually, when you have a, an air leak, it'll begin to, that that, uh, that that parameter will change, and you'll notice that. That's why there's alarm around it. So it's like how much, how hard is it working in order to generate that that PIP set at 20? So we, so then we can kind of simplify that and say it's like the amplitude and the power that's coming from on the oscillator yep and we'll get to the oscillator it's a little bit different you know this is using standard terminology we're used to pip things like that where this is going to use hertz right the different nomenclature more of a electrical engineering type of a of a term versus the breath per minute term that we use over here then we got the delta p which is that change in pressure between your pip and your peep so as you can see, your pips here, your delta P is going to be magnification of the difference between these two. So pip minus peep should equal your delta P, should. There are going to be times when it doesn't, and that's when you have to make some adjustments. And then your map, which is what's going to stabilize and keep the airways open, which, do you remember what our normal map, map is supposed to be? What's our normal for map? Say that again? Above 65 for map? That's a little high. <laughs> that's a little high. <laughs> Just a little bit. Not mean, not mean arterial pressure, mean airway pressure. What's our normal map for mean airway pressure? It's like 8 to 16. So we want to try to make sure that our map is co coincides with functionality all throughout. Remember, the map is like the stew that your ingredients created, right? So your eye time, your pips, all those ingredients equal that mean airway pressure. So you guys see this yellow button or this yellow light up here? This is what's going to flash when it, it alarms. So if things are going off it's not, and there's alarm going off, this is going to flash yellow. You can push the green button and it will stay yellow until you fix the problem. Um, you can also pause your audio for your alarms. This is where you get the water that comes from a bag that is pumped into your system. This is where you put that cassette that we showed you. Guys, remember that? This is what's where, that's where all the pressures and the mi mixing of gases are all gonna happen. So as it pushes down through the tube. And then this is where the circuit comes out to go out to here, to go out to your patient.